Riding in the rain can be exhilarating, if you know what you're doing. This video is what cyclists don't tell you about riding in the rain. We've had some great weather recently, but here on Scotland's west coast, riding in the rain is just a fact of life. And over the years, I've picked up a few ideas which I'll share with you in this video. It's part of a series of videos sharing with new cyclists some of the stuff experienced riders take for granted. If that sounds interesting, please subscribe. But what is not so great is trying to shoot video in the rain because you get smears all over the lens. So I'm going to change my glasses, change my helmet and turn the rain off. Right, well, that's better, isn't it? OK, when I'm going out for a ride in the rain, there are three things I bear in mind. I try harder to be seen, I try harder to stay dry, and I'm aware I will not succeed completely at both. But here are a few ideas. If you're commuting a lot in poor weather, it might be worth buying an aero helmet. It's made with fewer large air vents to reduce aero drag, but that also means less water gets in. It'll keep you drier and warmer, and the colour of this one makes it more visible too. If you have a normal helmet, a cap underneath will help. You can get waterproof ones. A snood or a buff pulled over your head also works like a, like a bandana, and they also double as a face mask if you have to go into a shop. They'll stop rain trickling down the back of your neck into the jacket. I'm told some people put cling film over their helmets, but I've never seen that. Finally, there are rain covers, but I think these look dreadful and might flap around. Check the kit video for my thoughts on cycling jackets. Breathability is essential, but it will not guarantee that you stay dry. Cycling jackets tend not to have hoods, but if you're heading into the wilds in very heavy rain, I'm told a hood can be good and you'd wear it under your helmet, but it's not something I've ever done. I don't ride in a city either, but if I did, I'd get a jacket with Provis reflective technology. It's like the, the stripe here, grey in normal conditions, but when a vehicle's headlights hit it, it pretty much lights up because it's highly reflective. I have some Torm arm warmers with that same technology on them. I've yet to find truly waterproof gloves. The problem comes at the cuff. The water runs down your arm and just fills up the glove. And the only way around that is a bit of a faff to tuck the glove under the cuff of the jacket. That's why I like this Gore-Tex jacket, because it's got zips that open up and let you put the glove on and put the jacket around it. It's worth putting your phone in a case. This one is made in Africa by the charity Cycle of Good. From old bike tires, there's a card slot on the back. Legs stay pretty warm, even in wet weather. Anything that claims to be a waterproof tight usually just has a coating on it, which will wear off in time with washing. In cold weather, rain can be painful if your crotch gets wet, male or female, but there are some solutions. You can put non-padded tights over a pair of shorts for extra warmth. Don't go double padded on a longer ride. It's not as comfy as you might expect. Waterproof trousers can work well, particularly for commuting. Unless you're doing a short commute, breathability is again essential. A great option, one some bike packers use, are waterproof baggy shorts over regular tights. I'm going to have to buy a pair of these. They keep thighs and your backside dry and allow air circulation around the lower legs. You've probably heard of chamois cream. Chamois cream was invented to soften the pads in cycling shorts when these pads were made of chamois leather. Now it's really a balm for backsides to prevent chafing. It's very personal when you use this. Some people use it on hot, dry rides. Others use it every ride. I tend to use it for long rides in the rain. For hygiene reasons, I like the stuff that comes in tubes because with tubs, there is a risk of double dipping. Wind wants backside. Back for more. Wet feet can get freezing cold because they're actually not doing much work. Waterproof socks help for short distances and are great for stream crossings. But over time, the water just runs down the inside of your tights, 
fills up the socks so your feet get even colder because they're now effectively sat in bags of water. I made a video experimenting with homemade cuffs that grip the ankle and divert water above the outside of the socks, and I'll link to that at the end. Shoe covers do help, particularly with spray coming up from the road. Velo toes are very thin, tight covers, but they rip quite easily. Traditional covers like these are easier to put on, but obviously the rain just fills them from above. Cycling boots are much the same, even really good ones like these lakes with tight fittings. They are more about providing warmth in drier conditions than in wet. Mud guards can prevent a soaking from the front wheel and a soggy backside from the rear wheel. These are full mud guards, but lighter ones that fit any bike, often held on with just elastic, also work well. I like these ass savers, and it's easy to make your own. Bent pieces of plastic which clip into the saddle rails and are great for wet spring days. There's a school of thought which says to lower tyre pressures for better grip, putting more tread on the road. I've never found that necessary. However, it is a good idea to stay clear of the paint on the roads. Those white lines get very slippery in rain. So far I've focused on staying dry as best you can, but the first point was about being seen. There are now bike lights designed to be used during the day and with an irregular flash sequence that draws the attention of drivers. This is an exposure lights daylight and I have this separate to a night light. I use them together after dark. Incidentally, the flatter beam would go on my bars and the spotlight beam would go on my helmet, much as you would with a powerful off-road mountain bike lighting setup. The same rear light works for both situations, although at night I use more than one. I also put reflective tape on the sides and the back of my helmet. Apologies if you knew all that. This video series is tips for beginners, so if you can contribute some ideas, please leave them in the comments. If you found this helpful, please subscribe and check the other videos in the Beginner's Tips playlist. The link is on the screen. Until next time, bye.